They've been targeted by some in the media. Poll workers deliberately were destroying Republican ballots. Demonized by politicians. Tens of thousands of votes were changed by workers. And threatened by election deniers. Being a volunteer election poll worker has become a dangerous job. I second guess everything that I do. It's affecting my life in a, in a major way. In every way. All because of lies. All of this attacking, abuse, and harassment has added to a shortage of people willing to facilitate the U.S.'s most democratic process. This got us wondering, how did we get here? Who benefits from this cornerstone of democracy being under assault? How is it being addressed? Democracy is in crisis. As contentious partisan politics have continued to escalate, people have been understandably discouraged from volunteering to work as poll workers and officials. We're not trying to break in. We just like to watch you count the ballots. To better understand election worker recruitment, even before supporters and members of the GOP began working to invalidate the 2020 presidential election, we spoke with Tiana Epps Johnson, the founder and executive director of the Center for Tech and Civic Life. One of the most critical roles of local election officials across the country is recruiting and training um, people across their communities to serve to be poll workers. Even before this year, that's been a challenge for election departments to be able to recruit enough volunteers to make sure that the process has enough capacity to actually work. And then in 2020, we saw a challenge turn into a crisis. Election departments across the country, as they were administering elections during a pandemic, saw poll workers drop out in record numbers. In part, that was because the average age of a poll worker at that time was around 72. A lot of these folks were among the most higher risk for the pandemic, and so it made a lot of sense um, for them to step back from that volunteer role. Epps Johnson's organization supports election offices across the country with resources to keep the voting process secure, efficient, and equitable. She's also been personally working to support U.S. elections for more than a decade, so she knows her stuff. One of the best stories, I think, of 2020 was that as a response, we saw hundreds and thousands of people, especially young people, raise their hands and volunteer to be poll workers for the first time. But we need, and election departments need, and the voting process needs folks to show up every election. And so right now, as we look at the 2022 midterm, election departments, both uh, small ones and large ones, are seeing anywhere between tens and hundreds of spots that they still need to fill with poll workers in order to have their operations work as smoothly as they hope it would. Stop the theft of the presidential election. As if recruiting poll workers wasn't already hard enough, the 2020 presidential election took things from bad to horrifying. Poll workers in Michigan were duplicating ballots. Where are those votes coming from? What's going on? Stop, stop, stop! Stop, stop, stop! Poll workers illegally backdating thousands of ballots. All of a sudden, election officials and volunteers became targets of abuse, attacks, and harassment. Some even feared for their lives. Wandrea Arche Moss's testimony before the Select Committee to investigate the January 6th attack on the United States Capitol really put into perspective how dire the situation had become. The violent harassment and threats she experienced as a 2020 election worker in Georgia forced her into hiding. This turned my life upside down. Um, I no longer give out my business card. I don't transfer calls. I um, don't want anyone knowing my name. I don't want to go anywhere with my mom because she might yell my name out over the grocery aisle or something. I don't go to the grocery store at all. I haven't been anywhere um, at all. I've gained about 60 pounds. I just don't do nothing anymore. I don't want to go anywhere. I felt horrible for picking this job and being the one that always wants to help and always there, and never missing out one election. I just felt like it was, it was my fault for putting my family in this situation. And poll workers weren't the only people being targeted. We've seen election officials in uh, communities like Al Schmidt 
a Republican election official from the city of Philadelphia who oversaw the 2020 election described really publicly in forums the ways that harassment has not only been directed at him, but also his family. It's something that we're not only seeing directed at poll workers, but also election officials and is really impacting sort of the overall environment that people are working in right now. This all left us wondering, who benefits from an environment where people are afraid to volunteer to take part in the democratic process? What is the result of this sort of chaos? One of the biggest drivers of polling places closing is because there's not enough poll workers. And when we see polling places close, that means that you end up with things like long lines or really inconvenient voting options for communities. And ultimately that can mean that voters are disenfranchised. So poll workers have a really direct impact on making sure that there's enough voting options for everybody in their community. A second thing that comes to mind about why poll workers are just so critical is that they are one of the only proven antidotes to one of the biggest challenges that we're experiencing in democracy right now which is a crisis in confidence. Data shows that one of the few interventions that's proven to up people's confidence in voting and that the process was fair and accurately done is their experience with their poll worker. When voters are disenfranchised and made to feel that their voices don't matter, they stay home. They stop participating in our democracy, which is great news for anyone looking to exert complete unchecked power over our country. So in between hyperventilations, we asked Epps Johnson what she's seeing being done to combat this crisis. So some of the concrete ways that we've seen election departments respond include investing resources in increased security at facilities where things like the counting process happen. And we've also seen election departments really improve their training on topics like how to de-escalate a conflict at a polling place so that it might not rise to the place of violence or help election workers understand how they might keep information about themselves less public if they are being a volunteer. So there's some really concrete, practical ways that folks are responding to make sure that they are doing the best that they can to mitigate for this environment of harassment and violence. Epps Johnson also had some advice for how voters can support election officials and poll workers. If you're a voter and you're at a polling place on election day, be sure to say hi to your poll workers, their volunteers that are taking time out of their day to be there and make sure that the process really works for you. And if you encounter a situation that feels tense or feels threatening, really work not to make it exacerbated, but instead see if there's ways that you can engage directly with the poll workers, see if you can support them and follow their lead um, and really go from there. Poll workers have always been crucial facilitators of democracy and their services are more important now than ever. And remember, sowing seeds of doubt in our elections is a key step along the path toward a totalitarian government. It's the kind of oppression that the U.S. has spent decades trying to weed out in countries across the globe. Do you think enough is being done to address the attacks on poll workers? Let us know in the comments.